welcome back to our channel. Today, we embark on a journey through the intricate labyrinth of relationships, offering insights and guidance along the way. Victoria, you've been at this for quite some time, Henry said, a grin playing on his lips as he observed his daughters fidgeting in front of the mirror. At just five years old, she carried herself with an uncommon level of gravity that not only brought a perpetual smile to her father's face but also to those who cared for her. Her kindergarten teacher, Mrs. Smith, often marveled at the uniqueness of the child. Henry would occasionally return home yearning for solitude, but Victoria would immediately settle beside him, armed with a question that had been brewing in her young mind. Daddy, why do we dream, she once inquired. Henry eased onto the couch, cradling her in his lap. With a smile, he responded, that's a fantastic question, my little genius. We dream because our minds remain active even when we're asleep. They craft little tales and images that fill our dreams. Yet, Victoria's curiosity persisted. But why do our dreams differ? I dreamt of a princess, while Johnny from kindergarten mentioned soaring in a spaceship. Everyone is unique, with distinct thoughts and desires. Additionally, our dreams reflect what we absorb during the day. That's why our dreams are diverse. But what does the mind do when we're awake and not dreaming? And so, their conversation flowed, Henry utterly forgetting his intention to recline in silence. A few moments earlier, Ellie, Henry's wife and Victoria's mother, had remarked, you know, dear, our daughter occasionally startles me. Her intellect surpasses her five years, and her inquiries often leave me perplexed. Henry would chuckle, replying, Honey, that's a positive thing. Look at her. She's only five, yet she's already earned recognition for her creativity in school. Indeed, it was true. Henry and Ellie brimmed with pride for their little girl, always attentive to her thoughts and opinions, gaining the admiration of friends who held them as a model family. Yet, as life would have it, unexpected trials arose, even in seemingly ideal existences. Lost in thought, Henry nearly drove past the kindergarten. Concerns about his beloved wife occupied his mind. Ellie had displayed unusual behavior in recent weeks, nervous, evading eye contact, as if concealing something. When asked if everything was all right, her responses expertly deflected from the matter. This departure from their usual trust-based relationship puzzled him. Henry's mind raced back to their college days when fate had them stuck in an unreliable elevator. Joking and sharing stories, they formed a bond that endured. It seemed unshakable until unforeseen challenges surfaced. Just as it was often in seemingly perfect lives, the unexpected emerged. And so, their story continued, entwining humor, curiosity, and the ebb and flow of life's unpredictability. However, with time, Henry's feelings for Ellie transcended mere friendship and admiration for her beauty. Being in her presence brought him immense joy, and he found himself captivated by her. Despite his fear that confessing his emotions might jeopardize their friendship, he realized the situation couldn't persist. One fateful day, Henry summoned the courage to take the leap. He invited Ellie for a walk, astonishing her with a massive bouquet of flowers. Yet, what truly impressed her were his heartfelt words, revealing his long-standing love for her. To his delight, he learned that she held the same affection. That day marked a turning point, and they pledged to maintain complete honesty henceforth. Their relationship blossomed over an extended period, and following their graduation, they tied the knot. Meticulously planning their future, Victoria's dream of opening a small organic food store was the next goal on the horizon. They diligently saved money, poised to make their aspirations a reality. Henry's love for Ellie and his devotion to their daughter knew no bounds. Simultaneously, he recognized Ellie's unwavering commitment. Yet, her recent behavior cast a shadow of worry and sadness. Occasional thoughts crossed his mind, perhaps she was involved with another man. But he swiftly dismissed such notions, avoiding the pain of revisiting past experiences. 
Henry dreaded history repeating itself, as he recalled the horrors of his parents' tumultuous relationship. The memory remained vivid, etched in his mind as if it happened yesterday. Returning home early from school due to a pounding headache, he inadvertently stumbled upon his parents' heated argument. His father's violent outburst struck his mother, jolting Henry onto the couch. Despite the pain, he intervened, positioning himself between his parents. In a voice trembling with a mixture of anger and confusion, he shouted, leave me alone. Tears welled up, contained through sheer will. The concept of such aggression was alien to him, incomprehensible. His father paused, fists clenched, and spat accusations at his mother. You'll understand soon enough, he warned before departing. Unwavering, Henry stood his ground, the barrier between his parents' conflict. But his father's words echoed the truth in his mother's sorrowful sobs. I'm sorry, and you'll understand someday, intermittently pierced through her cries. While he comprehended his mother's unspoken message even then, it was years later that a painful divorce ensued. Walter Douglas, his father, held influence within legal circles, securing custody of Henry. Through manipulative tactics, Grace, his mother, was painted as a villain, banned from approaching her son in court. Henry stood by, unmoving, as his mother clung to him, her pain palpable. His father accused her of betrayal, alleging she chose another man over her family. The revelation was bitter, a wound that festered as Henry matured. He eventually realized his father's cruelty, the memories of childhood, previously dismissed, took on new meaning. His mother's frequent injuries, attributed to clumsiness, became more sinister. Rarely did she challenge his father, her smiles increasingly scarce, except when alone with Henry. One day, sifting through old belongings, he stumbled upon a thin notebook in a storage room. Its pages bore his mother's confessions, documenting the events and emotions she had kept hidden. In these vulnerable words, Henry found a deeper understanding of the pain his mother endured. Henry deduced the following, Grace, his mother, had endured her husband's oppressive behavior with resilience, striving to be a dutiful wife from the outset. Early in their marriage, Grace recognized Walter's despotic tendencies. He brooked no objections, maintained control over every aspect of their household, prohibited her from working, curtailed her social interactions, and erupted into anger at the slightest pretext. Jealousy emerged as his predominant trigger for rage. Suspicion gnawed at him in the presence of any man near his wife. Grace, however, naively interpreted this as a sign of his love. Then Henry came into their lives. Grace, his young mother, showered him with love and care. All this transpired while she was in the hospital due to another of Walter's outbursts, the true reason wisely concealed from others. Complications prolonged her stay to about 10 days, during which she received care from a young doctor. This physician displayed sensitivity, kindness, and attentiveness, setting him apart from the rest. Grace's fondness for him gradually evolved into a romantic connection. He encouraged her to leave her husband and join him, even offering to confront Walter together. Grace, however, chose to confront her marital issues alone, fearful of both her husband's reaction and her young son's understanding. The inevitable occurred, Walter discovered the affair sooner than expected. Henry now grasped the distress his mother had endured at home. Missing her intensely, he would inquire about her whereabouts from his father, only to be met with angry shouts. He resolved that once he had the freedom, he would seek her out. When he turned 16, his father handed him a letter revealing his mother's passing. The letter, sent two weeks prior, had been deliberately withheld by his father, rendering attending the funeral futile. Fueled by this betrayal, Henry left his father's home at 18, leaving his mother's diary behind as his final message. Their interactions thereafter remained stilted, neither finding the right words to bridge the chasm between them. Snapped back to the present by Victoria's reminder, Henry refocused on the road as they pulled into the brinks. Mrs. Smith, the attendant, guided Victoria out of the car. 
She informed Henry that Victoria had been facing some trouble with another girl named Madison, and Victoria seemed determined to address the issue. With a promise to watch over Victoria, Henry said goodbye and headed to work. The day loomed busy, and in the evening, Ellie collected Victoria from daycare. Seeing Joseph, Victoria confronted him, which escalated into a serious altercation. The caretaker, Mrs. Smith, intervened, separating the two children. Victoria ended up with a minor scratch on her nose, prompting Mrs. Smith to suggest a visit to the nurse for a checkup. Victoria concurred. She had no desire to appear anything but attractive. Emily, the new nurse, greeted her with a friendly smile. Having only joined the nursery three days ago, Emily reveled in her work, the camaraderie of the staff, and the interactions with the children. What's your name? Victoria inquired of Emily, who returned the question, studying the young girl intently. And I know you, Emily added, a smile gracing her lips. Taken aback, Victoria questioned, really? Emily's response took them both by surprise, your picture is in my dad's wallet. Mrs. Smith, the caregiver, raised an eyebrow, and Emily blushed in astonishment. She didn't even have a boyfriend currently, let alone imagine whose wallet her photograph might be in. Victoria, that can't be true, Mrs. Smith protested. Victoria insisted, it's true. It's been there for a while. Helpless, Emily glanced at Mrs. Smith, who met her gaze with a hint of suspicion. Mrs. Smith held strong values regarding family and fidelity, and she immediately harbored doubts about Emily's involvement with Henry. That evening, when Ellie came to pick up Victoria and learned of the altercation from the daycare worker, Victoria revealed, Mom, Mrs. Smith didn't tell you everything. Intrigued, Ellie inquired, what did she omit? As Victoria continued, Ellie's smile faded, we have a new nurse, and her picture is in Daddy's wallet. Ellie's heart sank, questioning the validity of this information. What? Are you sure this could be true? She stuttered. Victoria reaffirmed, it is, Mom. Didn't you see her? Look, there she goes. Victoria pointed to Emily as she left the daycare and headed toward the bus stop. Ellie's heart clenched as unsettling thoughts flooded her mind. She had been anxious about broaching a particular subject with her husband, unsure of how to reveal certain news to him. Now, it seemed, there was no need for that conversation. She had assumed this news would be significant to Henry. Ellie had gathered the courage to inform him that she was pregnant. Despite Henry's enthusiastic vision of their future together, Ellie had reservations about following the meticulously planned path. She wanted this baby desperately, yet it seemed she was alone in this desire. Victoria noticed the shift in her mother's mood but wisely remained silent as they walked home, the weight of unspoken tension heavy between them. Henry arrived home late from work and was struck by Ellie's unusual silence. This marked a departure from her usual practice of greeting him, even when he returned in the middle of the night. Sensing something amiss in their family dynamic, he knew it was time to address the issue. His mind buzzed with speculative thoughts as he climbed into bed, aware that Ellie was awake, feigning sleep. Deciding to respect her silence for the moment, he resolved to wait until morning for a conversation. They had always navigated their issues together. Morning came, and the sounds of commotion emanated from the kitchen along with Victoria's agitated voice. Henry realized he was on the brink of oversleeping. Victoria was already scrutinizing her scratch in front of the mirror, while Ellie was in the kitchen. Joining them, he took a seat next to his daughter and asked about the injury. Honey, what happened to your face? Please don't tell me. Did you get into another fight with Madison? He sighed, yet this incident seemed to have imparted a lesson to him. Dad, how long will this scratch stay on my nose? Victoria questioned, her distress evident. Henry's warm smile met her gaze as he gently kissed her nose. He looked toward his wife, seeking confirmation. Right? he inquired. Ellie turned toward him, her expression serious. 
Sterling Henry, we need to talk, she stated firmly. Henry's response mirrored hers, I was just about to suggest the same thing. His smile remained, but an inkling of doubt had already begun to creep into his heart. Ellie regarded him with a lengthy gaze before abruptly standing up, returning with a manila folder. I've been trying to figure out how to tell you this, where to start, she began, her voice tinged with apprehension. I was afraid of how you'd react. In any case, I'm pregnant, Ellie revealed. A momentary beam of joy flickered across Henry's face, only to be replaced by a sense of foreboding as he perceived there was more to her statement. I'm not planning on terminating the pregnancy, Ellie continued, her tone suggesting there was more beneath the surface. Yes, we hadn't planned for this, but that's not the main issue here. Perplexed by this sudden twist of events, Henry blinked in confusion. I don't understand. Can you repeat that? What nurse, he asked, his bewilderment evident. Ellie rolled her eyes, her tone tinged with frustration. Oh, Henry, spare me the act. I've always trusted you. I believed you would never betray me, yet now I feel like a complete fool. How could you do this? As if it weren't enough that you were having an affair with a kindergarten nurse, Victoria also mentioned that you have her pictures in your wallet. I've seen this girl, young, beautiful, at least a decade younger than you. I suppose I'm just not attractive to you anymore. Henry closed his eyes and rubbed his temples, the information overload causing his head to throb. The initial joy of learning about Ellie's pregnancy was overshadowed by the context in which the news was presented. What on earth does this nurse I've never seen have to do with anything? Honey, have you lost your mind? Have I ever given you a reason to doubt me? Henry's frustration escalated, and he stormed out of the room. Returning with his wallet, he opened it, revealing its contents, credit cards, documents, money, a family photo, and an old picture of his mother. See, the only photos I have are ours and mom's. That's all, he asserted. Exchange glances and said in unison, Victoria, could you come here? Their daughter entered the kitchen, her expression perplexed and nervous. The tense exchange between her parents was something she had never witnessed before. Victoria, what picture were you talking about? Henry asked. Victoria pointed to the picture in his hands, clarifying that it was the nurse's picture. Without delay, Henry and Ellie rushed to dress and were in the car within moments, speeding to their daughter's preschool. Henry couldn't fathom how this was possible. His mother had passed away, and this girl before him was much younger. Ellie dropped off their daughter at her group and joined Henry as they approached the medical area. Emily, the nurse, looked up in surprise as the man burst into the room. Hello, can I help you? she asked, her unease growing under his intense gaze. His voice barely audible, Henry replied, apparently, I need your help. Emily suddenly recalled the incident from the previous day and grew increasingly uncomfortable under his scrutiny. As she began to stand to escort him out, she paused when she heard him inquire, excuse me. Was your mother's name Grace? Confirming his question, Emily questioned how he knew. Overwhelmed, the man's eyes welled up with tears, and he pulled an old photograph from his pocket and placed it before her. With a shaky hand, he wiped his tears away and whispered, she's my mother, too. Emily was thoroughly bewildered, her thoughts in disarray as the man's words sank in. Finding herself at a loss, she sat down, and he followed suit. The silence between them stretched, two strangers bound by an unexpected revelation, sharing a profound moment in stillness. Emily broke the silence, her voice laden with confusion. But how? How could this be? I thought I would never see my brother again. I had given up all attempts to find you. His intrigue peaked, the man leaned in. You were looking for me. So mom told you about me. How much did you know? Emily shared the limited information she had, his name and later his address. Her search had led her to a dead end, 
as the family she encountered at the address knew nothing of the previous occupants. Just as they were about to delve further into the conversation, a knock at the door heralded the entry of his wife, Ellie, and Mrs. Smith. Though Mrs. Smith's disapproval was palpable, Henry seemed oblivious as he quietly introduced his wife to Emily, Ellie, this is my younger sister. Ellie's expression transformed, a weight seemingly lifted as a hint of a smile touched her lips. With misunderstandings clarified, they had an opportunity to converse. Henry had countless questions that he unleashed upon his newfound sister, eager to understand their shared history. With a smile, Emily began to recount her story from the beginning. She had been a bright and curious child, spending her formative years in a charming small town, enveloped by the warmth of loving and attentive parents. Her father, a doctor at the local hospital, dedicated himself to healing, while her mother nurtured their home and cultivated exquisite flowers in their garden. Emily found joy in observing her mother's contentment while tending to her garden, her face radiant with happiness. Evenings brought the family together for dinners filled with laughter and camaraderie. Emily's father would playfully scoop her up, spinning her around, and her giggles would fill the air. Then they would gather around the table for spirited conversations over delicious meals. Yet, Emily's observant nature led her to notice moments when her mother drifted into contemplation, her eyes welling with unspoken sorrows. Curiosity burning, Emily once asked about her parents' love story, eager to uncover the secrets of their past. But her mother's narratives were often fragmentary, leaving out significant portions of her life before meeting Emily's father. One day, while searching the attic for a doll her mother had stored away, Emily stumbled upon a dusty box hidden behind a stack of books. Among its contents were old photographs, one of which featured a boy bearing a striking resemblance to herself, cradled in her mother's arms. Startled by the discovery, she hurried to show it to her mother. Mom, look what I found. Emily exclaimed, placing the worn photographs in her mother's hands. Gazing at the images, her mother gasped and sank into a nearby chair. She looked at the photo for a long time before speaking softly, that photo is of your older brother. The revelation left Emily stunned, prompting her to inquire why her mother had never mentioned him before. Gently stroking Emily's hair, her mother explained, I always feared that knowing about him would burden your life. I wanted you to grow up surrounded by happiness and love, shielded from sorrow and pain. But now I see how wise and grown-up my little girl has become. It marked the first and last time Emily heard about her brother from her mother. Tragedy struck shortly thereafter when her parents were involved in a car accident caused by an out-of-control driver. Her father survived the crash, but her mother, despite fighting for hours in the hospital, did not make it. It was a heart-wrenching story for Henry to hear. Turning to Emily, he asked, what happened after that? How did you continue? Emily continued her tale, sharing, after that, it was just my father and me. We leaned on each other to navigate the dark times. He went above and beyond to ensure my happiness. I refrained from asking about you, fearing it might reopen his wounds. But when I turned 18, he disclosed the truth himself. He believed I had the right to know. Hearing this, Henry expressed his admiration, your father is a good man. Emily agreed, yes, he's truly wonderful. A contemplative silence enveloped Henry and Ellie. Eventually, Henry spoke with regret, we've wasted so much time. Sitting beside him, Ellie placed her hand on his, gently squeezing it. She looked at Emily with warmth, saying, let's not dwell on the past, dear. We have the present and the future to shape. That evening, the couple extended an invitation to Emily and her father for dinner, eager to bond further. Later, they reconvened at a restaurant. Emily's father, Harris Walker, revealed himself to be a cultured and affable man, impressing Henry with his gentle care of his daughter. Observing the interactions, Henry couldn't help but notice something intriguing. As he watched Emily, a thought began to take root in his mind. While she resembled her mother in many ways, 
her green eyes flecked with gold stood apart from her mother's gray and her father's brown. They shared the exact same green eyes as Henry's and someone else's. Henry approached Harris, Emily's father, as the women left to freshen up with Victoria. Harris smiled as he looked at Henry. You've been watching me all night. I'd be the last fool if I didn't know what you were going to ask, Harris stated, anticipating Henry's question. Henry was taken aback. Did you always know from the very first day, he inquired. Harris nodded. Grace told me right away, and I would have figured it out over time. But Miss C doesn't know. Harris removed his glasses, rubbed his nose, and continued. If you're going to tell her, please choose another time. Not today. Of course. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Henry responded. In Henry's eyes, Harris gained even more respect. He treated Emily as his own daughter, knowing she wasn't biologically his, providing her with a loving upbringing and unconditional affection. Henry looked at Alan and felt gratitude, recognizing the happiness this man had brought to his mother's life. The following day, Henry felt an unusual urge to speak to his father, Walter. Him, Walter muttered as he got up from his chair and approached the front door. Surprised, Walter found someone knocking on his apartment door. He was accustomed to only receiving food deliveries, not unexpected visitors. With cautious curiosity, he opened the door. Walter, please open the door. It's me, Henry's voice reached Walter's ears, leaving him stunned. In a haze of guilt and longing for reconciliation with his son, Walter was almost unsure if what he heard was real. He took a deep breath and swung the door open, revealing a tall young man staring back at him. It was indeed his son. Speechless, Henry entered the apartment while his father moved aside. Henry began to speak in a rush, not daring to meet his father's gaze. Dad, I was afraid that if I didn't come today, I'd regret it later. I need to tell you something, and we need to mend our relationship once and for all. Perplexed, Walter responded, I'm sorry, what? As Henry looked at his father, he saw a mixture of remorse and pain in his eyes, which caught him off guard. He had anticipated stubbornness or disregard from his father, but instead, he found an aged man with a once bright green eye that had lost its sparkle. In an instant, Henry realized that this man had been burdened with anguish for years. Please forgive me, my son. I owe you and your mother so much. I regret everything. How I wish I could make things right. But I was afraid that even if I had a chance to live my life again, I would act the same way I did before. Only the long days of loneliness made me realize my mistakes. Tears flowed freely from Walter's eyes as he continued, I thought about calling you so many times, but I was afraid you wouldn't want to hear from me. God, I'm such a coward. Henry gazed at his father, witnessing a vulnerability he had never seen before. This conversation was a long-anticipated moment for Walter. Hearing these heartfelt words from his usually stern and arrogant father was both shocking and touching for Henry. Dad, I had no idea, he admitted, his own emotions swirling within him. Walter looked at his son, his eyes filled with genuine concern. He knew he had caused immeasurable pain in their lives. Son, you hate me, and I understand, Walter said, his voice heavy with remorse. I don't hate you, Dad, Henry responded. And we will definitely address that, but right now, I want to say something else. Henry hesitated for a moment before blurting out, Dad, you have a daughter. Walter's breath caught, and his heart raced for the first time in years. He requested a seat, his mind racing with anticipation. As Henry recounted the entire story, Walter sat there, absorbing every detail. The young man before him had an earnest wish, to meet Harris. The next day, Henry sat across from Harris, ready to share the truth. Anxious, Walter fumbled with the button on his shirt sleeve as he faced Alan. Breaking the silence, he began to speak, revealing his long-standing resentment. 
I've hated you all my life. I thought of you as the despicable man who stole my wife. Then, Walter's gaze shifted around the room, landing on the photographs of Emily. Slowly, tears welled up in his eyes. No matter how hard he tried, he couldn't contain them. Harris sat quietly, offering a faint smile, and reassured him, it's okay. With a tremor in his movements, Walter rose from his seat and walked over to Harris. He extended his hand, and Harris responded by enveloping him in a strong embrace. Walter's tears flowed as he choked out, forgive me. Thank you for everything. Thank you for raising my daughter and being her real father. Overwhelmed with emotion, Walter added, Grace never spoke ill of you, and she never held a grudge. All she remembers is that you saved her once. Harris's words only deepened the ache in Walter's heart. I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry, Walter repeated, his voice heavy with regret. Meeting Harris had been a profound revelation for Walter. He saw in Harris a man who, despite life's challenges, remained devoted and caring. Walter realized that Harris was the father and husband that both Grace and Emily deserved, a man capable of giving them the love and support that he himself could never provide. Walter chose not to disrupt his daughter's world and shatter the beautiful reality where Harris was her father. It was a difficult decision, born out of his own feelings of unworthiness to be called her father. Six months passed. Emily held Victoria in her lap, flipping through the pages of a picture book. Anxious, Henry broke the silence, asking, why is it taking so long? Emily smiled, aware of the reason, even though Ellie had insisted she keep it a secret from Henry. The door swung open, and a nurse appeared. Henry looked at her with tired eyes. I. Are you still here? He asked. The nurse reassured him, don't worry. Everything went well. The boys are a little weak, but that's normal. If it's twins, everything should be fine by tomorrow. Blinking in disbelief, Henry turned to Emily. She stifled a laugh into her fist as Henry shot her a stern look. You know what kind of sister you are, he teased. Settling back into his chair, he addressed the nurse. So you're saying I have two sons? The nurse nodded. Exactly. Looks like your wife has a surprise for you. Henry's goofy smile filled the room as he celebrated the unexpected turn of events. Afterward, the family gathered for a celebratory dinner. As they sat down together, Harris checked his watch and stood up, seeking everyone's attention. I'm glad we're all here, he began. I'm very happy for you, Henry and Ellie. He continued, his voice carrying a hint of regret, I apologize for the decision I made. I invited your father, Henry. The room fell silent as everyone's eyes turned toward Walter. Harris hesitated, knowing the weight of his revelation. I know he once caused Grace a lot of pain, but he's changed and repented. We must forgive him and give him a second chance. Walter entered the room, and Emily's smile faded as she stared at him. Her gaze was unwavering, and slowly realization dawned upon her. Taking a deep breath, she locked eyes with Walter, the tension palpable in the room. Walter, she began, her voice steady yet laced with emotion. For a brief moment, silence enveloped the room as everyone held their breath, waiting for Emily's response. Walter approached the table, his eyes brimming with years of remorse and longing. Hello, Emily, he whispered softly, his voice carrying an undercurrent of hope. As the room held its collective breath, Emily found herself at a loss for words. She felt a lump in her throat as emotions surged within her. Unable to articulate her thoughts, she looked at Walter, conveying her feelings through her gaze. Walter met her gaze with a small, sad smile, understanding the complexity of the situation. Take your time, Emily, Walter said, his voice gentle and patient. I've waited this long. I can wait a little longer. The room held its silence as Emily wrestled with her emotions. After that transformative night, 
the family dynamic slowly shifted. While there were moments of awkwardness and misunderstandings, they navigated through them, strengthening their bonds. With each passing day, the two healthy boys brought both joy and chaos into Henry and Ellie's lives. Victoria adored her new brothers, and the family blossomed. Walter, although maintaining a certain distance, became an integral part of their lives, making an effort to be present and supportive. He had lost many years but was determined to make the most of the time he had left. As for Alan, he watched with contentment. He had raised Emily as his own, loving her unconditionally. Now, he felt a profound sense of fulfillment as he witnessed his family find completion and peace, knowing that he had made the right choices. With a final expression of gratitude, he closed their story, thank you for being a part of our storytelling journey. We'll see you in the next adventure. I hope you enjoyed it and took away something meaningful. If you did, please give this story a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tales like this. Feel free to share your thoughts and feedback in the comments below. Until next time.